my, my name is Tim Coates. Uh, first, let me say thank you to John Trasker from the Every Library Institute for not just for the opportunity to present this, uh, to give you this presentation, but also for the help that he gives me in the work that we do. Um, he's been enormously supportive and, uh, and encouraging and it helps because it makes it um, makes it legitimate um, that such, you know such a good organization as the every library institute uh, support what, what, what this research that we've been doing so i'm going to we're about to to publish a new freckle report this week i think um, and the title of this one which is the third as i'll show you in a second is very simply libraries need books um, and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by that in this in this short presentation. Uh, and uh, I would say to start with, we all share, and I'm sure everybody who's attending this uh, meeting and uh, who's listening to this, we all share an understanding of the profound importance of public libraries. We all might have different ways of saying it, but the the contribution that public libraries make and have made for many decades, many centuries, to civil life, to culture, in, in the United States certainly and in other countries around the world, is is phenomenally important. It's profound. What what will I think surprise you in this presentation is the concern I'm going to express and show in figures about the state of the public library service at the present time. Uh, and I'm going to say, you'll hear me say later on, don't be defensive about the messages I'm giving, the figures I'm showing, the, the approach that, that if we could persuade you to take is that these things are real and true and they need to be addressed and they need to be addressed by those people who are responsible for operating public libraries, because in, in many ways and in many areas, there is nobody else that can take the actions that I'm going to describe to you. Some of those actions are, will be startling. I, I, I warn you before we go too far, but they are not set out of ignorance. They're set out of deep concern and the need for us to make some changes. Just to, uh, to start with, let me tell you a little bit about this project. I, I've been involved with public libraries in the United States for 15 years or so, and in other countries for even longer. About three or four years ago, 2019, one of the needs that I identified was that we don't have a proper accounting view of what the public think of public libraries. We know an awful lot about what librarians think, we know a great extent what, what funders, how funders respond to public libraries and politicians, but what we actually don't really know is what the wider public think of public libraries. And so I, I set out to do some consumer research uh, in order to begin to lay the ground of sort of some basic information about where public libraries fit in their lives. And particularly because libraries are to, to a great extent about reading, where public libraries fit within their own reading habits. The, project, the reports that have been written bring together two sources of data, which I'll talk about more in a moment. Um, and they, they have led to a whole set of ideas about the way in which uh, libraries could respond to the data that they're being shown. So, the, so this is not, this is, as I said before, this is a, intended to be a constructive discussion about what libraries sh should need to address and can address. We use two principal sources of data, although we're of course aware of all, all kinds of other things that go on and, 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 and our own experience, but there are two principal sources of, of the numbers, as it were. The first is the annual reports that are produced by the IMLS, which is the Institute of Museums and Library Services, which is the federal body who gather together um, figures about performance and about cost from every library in the United States. Um, and also, of course, it is the grant giving body. So they have an overview of 
in, the, in, in, the, in, in what they compile about how the library service is operating. Th that, those reports are a, are a mine of wonderful information, as I'm going to show you um, how it can be used, I think, in ways that's, that, that not many people realize. They show when, 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 you, when they are sort of looked at in depth, they actually have a huge amount of information in them. Um, and I'm, I'm, you'll hear me encouraging individual libraries to look at their own information in the, in the, in, in, from the IMLS. It's a very, very important source of information. The, the second source are the consumer surveys, which I've just been talking about, which we've now done three, four times, um, where we're beginning to get a picture, a, really, a consistent picture, of what the public's view of public libraries is, how they use them, the extent to which they use them, and uh, the, the extent and some of the reasons why they don't use them, which is terribly important in, in trying to learn how to manage the service. Um, so in the slides that I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you that each of them has on them the source that's been used. It's either the IMLS or it's Preco. And, and, the, and the, the, those are the two sources. There's a, and it, as it says on the bottom of this slide, there's a new Freckle report out this week. Uh, you can obtain it from wholesalers. It, 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 it's, it's, it's really a, a report that needs to be bought by your library rather than an individual. But it, 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 you will find it has a lot of information and a lot of data. And this year, a lot of recommendations in, in a lot of detail about the actions that library managers, uh, librarians could and you know, I believe should be taking. So the, the, that's, those are the three reports we've had so far with their ISBNs. You'll see this slide um, in, 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 what, in, the, in the documentation that you're given, but that, they're, they're, there they are. And the title of the one this year is called Libraries to be Books, as I've said. So here we go. Um, this is a slide which comes directly from the IMLS data, which shows how you can look at an individual library service, and I picked out six, not entirely at random because some of them have been parts of conversations that have gone on in the, in the last year. Um, and, and for each library, it's possible to create slides like this, but of different pieces of information. So this particular one is the number of library visits per citizen for each of those six library units. But we, and there's one, we, you, there's one in a moment about other services that the libraries offer. You can look at the same thing about costs. You can same, look at the same thing about salaries. And, and, and it's a terribly helpful way of analyzing your own library service um, in order to draw some conclusions about, you know, kind of what you need to be doing. Um, if anybody needs some help in doing them for their own library service, I'd, I'd be only too happy to, to help them. Because I'm, I'm now used to being to doing it. it it's um, it, it, it takes a while with each one, but once you've got, it, got the hang of it, as it were, um, it's quite easy to do. So, so here we have six library services. You recognize the names of them, I'm sure, in, uh, all of them. Um, in each one, the use of the libraries was falling, has been falling over the decade. And uh, this is not unusual at all. In fact, it's true in almost every library service in the country. And if I extrapolate, to the data from the entire United States. This is what it looks like. This is the number of public library visits per citizen, per person, if you like, um, and, and shows that pre-pandemic, the numbers were going down every single year for the last 10 years. Um, and in the pandemic, uh, the figure goes down quite dramatically, as you would expect that it would. The IMLS data, this is important, the IMLS data for 2020 covers about half of a year of pandemic. The, the, the pandemic lockdowns happened at the end of March, but because the libraries report their figures at different times of the year, in fact, it represents about half of the effect of a full year of pandemic. And it means that the figures that we're going to see in the following year for 2021 will also have will, a, an effect of a pandemic and it will be a full year. And then the following year will have at least another half year. In other words, that graph is going to stay low for, the, for three years. And that actually is a concern of its own, which we'll come to later on. The, this is a similar graph for the entire United States circulations, both print and digital. So again, you can see that the print circulations have been declining prior, prior to the pandemic. 
every single year. And you could also see that the digital circulations, which started in 2012, have never come near the level, the level of print circulations. They don't, they've not, they don't, of course, they don't match it. And it actually, in the pandemic, the increase year on year of digital circulations was slightly less than it had been in the year before. So all the press articles that we saw about how digital circulation had risen, risen during the pandemic uh, by a huge amount, actually, it's not really quite true. It, it was it certainly rose, but it didn't rise by any more than it had in previous years. And it by no means did it make up for the shortfall in print book circulation. And that's an important, that's a very important point. Let's go back to our six libraries here. These, 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 these six figures show in the black line is the, is the level of internet use, the pu public library uh, internet access points and how much they are used. And then the, and the, the, the brown line below it is the level of use, uh, the level of program attendance. What, what they show, and they're all on the same scale. So, so Miami-Dade, it's sort of one use per person per year. Uh, in, in Sacramento, it's about half a use per person per year. The pattern is, as you see in a moment, uh, use of the internet terminals in public libraries has, has gone down dramatically over the last decade. 10, 15 years ago, it was an important feature. Nowadays, it isn't so important at all. And the, uh, the amount of number of program attendances is small. It is quite small relative, for example, to the amount of book lending that goes on. Program attendance is you know, very good and everything, but it does not in any sense make up for the falling use of circulation. And that's the point of this slide. And again, so you can see it happening in each of these individual libraries, but basically the story is the same. Internet use is falling and the level of program use is, is very low. So if I look at that again on the national figure, the use of internet terminals, which is the, which is the graph on the left, has fallen really quite dramatically. Um, it, it, it's half, it's now, well, it's a third of what it was 10 years ago, <coughs> excuse me. And the level of program attendance has never been so great that it comes near to matching the other services that the public library offers. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't do programs. It just means that in, when we come to evaluate whether the library is you know, reaching out to a lot of people, is being used a lot, those are the numbers you know, that we look at, we're looking at uh, to see whether you know, the money is worth it, to be honest. Now, one of the presumptions that you see all over the place is, oh, well, it's because there's no money. You know, we don't get funded properly. We can't do it. That, that really isn't true. The, the public library funding is over $15 billion a year. Uh, it rises every year, has risen every year since 2010. Um, th this graph shows what's called the operations budget, which is the ordinary day in, day out you know, wages and salaries that the book funds and so forth, and the capital budget, which is the money that is allocated for buildings and renovations and equipment of that, that kind. <laughs> so you, you can see the library service is not deprived of money in any sense. Of, in fact, $15 billion is more, it's a good deal more than the entire funding of the, of the consumer publishing industry in the United States, um, which is about $13 billion a year in 2020. So, um, I, I think, you know, when we say, oh, well, you know, we, people are mean to us, we don't get the money we need. That, those, that, that's the figure, that, that, that's what the truth is. And um, it, money is not at heart the problem. Money is not the problem of public life. This is one of the big problems to me, because when, if we claim, you know, that we look after children and we provide services to communities, the service that we provide is helping people to find what they want to read. That is the essential primary service that the public libraries are for. And, you do, and we do it by offering them books we, or other materials, of course. But um, if you, if we have removed over 10 years, 
140 million books. That's not weeding or the, you know, the ordinary processes. That is simply the net number of books at the end of each year that the libraries report that they've got available you know, for people to see when they come into the library. And to reduce the number of books by 140 million is not the right thing to have done. It, 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 on its own, if all everything else was equal, that it, on its own would have reduced the use of the libraries by 20%. And um, I think that's a real concern. It not only is a concern that it's happened, it's a concern that nobody noticed. That year after year after year, we have, it was possible to have seen that use of the libraries was going down. It was also possible to have seen that the number of books available was going down and nobody either noticed or did anything about it. And I, I think that that is a, is a really serious issue that, that we face. That, that, is, that is not, and forgive me, but that is not good management. And then everybody talks about ebooks, of course. The point about ebooks is that they are wonderful, no, no doubt about it. I read them all the time, but they, ha they are of limited use. Where we try to be comprehensive in the reading material that we offer and make available for people, ebooks are not so good for children's books because small children tend not to read ebooks. They like the illustrations. Um, and they don't, they don't generally have access to devices that will allow them to, 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 to get hold of the ebooks. Um, although, of course, they have, they, actually, they have access to devices that they use for games and, and films and so on, but they tend not to have devices that will access children's books. Their ebooks are not good, so good for illustrated books. That's just a fact of life. But and if you go in a large bookstore, half the books there are illustrated, whether they be about cookery or whether they be about travel or whether they be about history or you know how to do things and so on. The, a huge quantity of the of the book of, of the of publishing industry is of illustrated books, and the uh, ebooks are not just not very good at that. You know, that, that that's a reality. And so, and the other element to be careful about ebooks is that if you could give access to, to ebooks, people don't have to come in the library. They, if they can use, if they can access them on their device, their phone, or their, or, you know, or their, or their iPad or whatever, then they don't have to come in the library. And a huge, most of the money that is spent on public libraries is for the buildings. So if we, if people don't come to the buildings, then in the end, people. That those people who are funding will say, why are we paying for buildings where the use is going down and down and down? So and I'm not saying don't use ebooks. What I'm what I but I what I would say is they have a they are of limited use and they need to be used in tandem with in part of a strategy with the print books. They are both important. And 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 we should never have got into a situation as we have where we are using the print book fund budget to, to buy ebooks and, and the book, print book fund has been diminished because that's what the figures say has been happening. Of course, it varies from, from library to library, but across the country, that is the picture that emerges. We've been taking out of the print book fund, using it for ebooks, and that and as a consequence, the use of the library buildings has gone down. And of course, finally, the point that everybody will make is and the ebook license are very expensive. And we can talk about the relationship with publishers, but in the end, the relationship with publishers has to be constructive because libraries absolutely depend on the material that publishers produce. And if, if publishers don't want you know, certain types of material being made available uh, in the library for free, th the, then there has to be a dialogue about what is the right role, you know, how do we make this work? And, and, and I believe that that dialogue doesn't take place effectively. And it can't take place effectively while the buying is being done by 9,000 separate libraries. No, there's nobody for a publisher to talk to. So anyhow, but I, I don't at this point want to get into the discussion about the relationship with publishers, but I could. But, but what the point of this slide is to say that ebooks are not the answer to restoring the use, and not, are not the answer to make my graph go up as it needs to do um, that we were looking at before. Now, this is a very different, but very important subject. 
in the, this is the, comes from our fretful consumer research. What we're beginning to find is consistently that while the service is very good for white people, it isn't so good for people for, uh, from other ethnic, ethnic backgrounds. It isn't, it, this is not because they don't read. The, the research says that they read just as much and, and just as often but the, all the ethnic groups, like all the diverse groups, read just as much as, as anybody else does, but the library service doesn't meet their needs. And that's a really serious issue. Uh, I was looking at an ALA report this morning where it's been on the agenda for 20 years, you know, we need to address this, but that's the result at the moment is that, we've, that there is a real, to me, concern that about how well libraries address different, different ethnic groups. And as the population shifts towards these other ethnic groups, then of course we find that the use of the libraries is going down because the, the people that are just not being well served and the libraries don't have the same reputation. And indeed, in the, in the Freckle report, you'll see where I analyze libraries in areas where there's a high number of uh, non-white people and the, and the library service just doesn't do as well. It, 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 it just, the figures are very, very clear. So we, that's a big, big issue on its own that, that needs to be addressed and quickly. No longer time for debate about whether it's true or not. It's true. This is another really important, really probably the most important slide to me. It's absolutely consistent. Every time we do a freckle survey, we ask people when you last, when you most recently went to the library, what was the purpose of your visit? And it was difficult to do this during the pandemic, but we but we did it before, and this is the same. And we have the, and since, and we have the same pattern every time we do it. And the reason why the public use public libraries is to read, to borrow, or to sit and work, or sit and study, you know, privately. In other words, about 70% of the use of a, of a public library is for what you would call the traditional use. It's to, it, it, it's to use the books or just to sit quietly and work or read. And, there, and all the other things that we, that we try to proclaim that libraries do, an event, a maker space, you know, a 3D printer, a program, a meeting, register very low on the reasons why people use the library. Of course, if you're standing in the library, you see the people who come to the programs. But this is a this is a serious piece of data that we, you have to grasp. Really, the overriding reason why the American public use their libraries is to read, and that that is irrespective of what they might say in in you know in opinion uh, discussions and so on and so on. That's the actual reason why they use it, and that that slide is consistent with the IMLS data when you look at you know wh where they record what libraries are used for comes out the same so um, we are at f in danger if we don't realize the importance of books and reading and study private study um, in the in the operation of our public libraries so I, now I'm going to come to my suggestions about the things that we need to do and the first thing I'm going to say, because it, by now a lot of people say this is, you know, this is criticism. We, you know, we, the, what we want is, you know, how good we are really. But, but you, the, the 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 reason for saying all the things that I've been saying is so that you can use these this analysis, this data, in order to improve the situation. So don't be defensive. I, I'm sure you're not being, but but it, it can happen, and people say, "Oh, he doesn't understand." And all that. Use the data which is there. I, if you need help, I can help you get it. It's all it's all in the public domain, and, uh, it, and construct positive plans from what you see. My advice is that the, the the number of books in the libraries is so small, it's feeble. It needs to treble. And I really mean that. I think we need to find a way of getting a lot more books, a lot more copies of individual titles. Uh, we need backup to individual, you know, so you can't have one book and then when it goes out on loan, it's a big circulate, there's nothing left. What you have to offer every day 
to the public, to your community, is every, everything that they might possibly want that you can, that you can squeeze into the library. Don't have shelves which are half full. Don't you know, kind of spread the, the, the stuff out. Don't, don't you know, create displays which are half empty. It just isn't attractive. It, and, and being attractive is a large part of the job. The methods that we librarians use for uh, collection management, for processing, uh, and the way that in which they use um, suppliers, I'll talk a bit more about in, in, in the other, on the next slide. But I, I would say they, all they do is they cost a lot of money and they slow down the supply. People have got used to the idea if they want a book, they can get it the next day or today. And, and if we can't match that speed of supply, then you know, we're not doing as well as, you know, as we, we're not matching their expectation. It's a, the, the processes and the collection management, I think need a, a complete overhaul very, very quickly. You have to aim to increase the book use of your library every week. You need to see the figures on a Monday morning. Have, have we uh, circulated more books to children? Have we circulated more books to this particular community? Have we circulated more books uh, to, you know, the, to the older people? You, you need those figures every single week and you need, because that's the way that you will find that you that you strive to increase, which is what we really have to do as we come out of the pandemic. You need more patrons, and you need each patron to have to borrow more. It's two, there's two dimensions to the issue. And we don't actually gather the data to, to do that, but we should, we must. So it, these are suggestions. We don't want, and I'll go through them quickly because you, you, you'll be able to read them separately. It's time to stop having plastic jackets. They protect the outside of books. They're plastic, which is bad. They don't protect the inside of the books. What we should have are more copies of the books and get rid of a book well, the minute it becomes too you know, dirty or unpleasant. Just throw it away. Just get, don't, don't hang on to, to um, dirty books. It's not, it's not nice. Get, we have to try and get rid of plastic jackets. We need to get rid of all the labels that we put on things. For goodness sake, we're in the 21st century. We, it is perfectly possible to have one single label stuck on a book, which tells you the ISBN, it tells you the copy number, tells you and can tell you which shelf it should be on. It's all on one small label on the back of the, on the, back of the, of the book. We, don't, we shouldn't have labels all over the place. We've got to stop doing that. So we so th those two things on their own mean that we just shouldn't be doing all the processing and we shouldn't be requiring people suppliers to do the processing for us. It slows everything down. It's costly, very expensive. We shouldn't be cataloging things. There's in the in the consumer uh, publishing industry, there's a thing called the Onyx feed, which is the cataloging that you everybody uses in, in bookstores, what Amazon uses. It's perfectly good enough for almost every public library, unless you know, you're a very highly research, you're, unless you're a research library. But every public library can use the catalog cataloging that's provided. They don't need to do any more. Don't ask for more. Just take what's been in the in the Onyx feed. The displays in the libraries need to be beautiful. They need to be attractive. They need the jackets that are on display are, <coughs> are some of publishers' best work. That's what you want to show to people so they can see how attractive and exciting the books are. <clears throat> I would say don't use wholesalers selection. So wholesalers have very inf useful information about what's being published and about what, what, what's selling well and so on and so on. That's fine, that's very useful, that's interesting. But you, but you as your individual branch library has to have to make the selection which is appropriate for your community. And it's very unlikely that the, the book supply wholesaler will have the first idea how to match your, how to match your local people. You have, it, it's a, that's the job. You, you must depend on um, what has been circulating or the, the statistics you've got about what people have been reading. What you have to do is go out and look for the books which will be interesting to, to your, your individual community. And it, that, that's where the work is, and, 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 and we need to do it. 
the need in order to increase patrons and increase use our collection management must be concentrated on people who don't use the service and and it must be full of stuff that we haven't got that's the point it's the, that we're looking for things that we don't currently carry um, so that we can add to the range that's available for people in order to attract people who don't come to the library remembering that something like 80 percent of people who read don't use the library in order to attract those people we need to have whatever it is with the books that they that they will want to read and of course within that the, 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 there's a real issue about making sure we concentrate on what we call the diverse audiences so that you know for if we're talking about hispanic uh, um, community we're talking about cookery we're talking about children's books we're talking about history we're talking about the culture of their countries uh, and in addition to fiction and in addition to, to young adult work it's the whole range that we need to find for, for each of the diverse audiences in every single library um, the, the library management systems are, are, are an opportunity to provide the information that really would help all that work but we don't use them terribly well because we use them really to replicate the way we used to do collection management 30 years ago and, and that that's wrong that we should use the library management systems both for management information and, and for collection management and for holding collections they can hold a library management system could hold the entire ebook collection without you having to go to a wholesale and we should explore that kind of thing the, the library management system could hold the entire onyx feed the, 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 they're big enough companies they can do that and that and that kind of uh, progress would, we should see and, I, and in terms of um, contracts for supply with with suppliers or with with publishers i i think that we need to give much more authority to very very large consortia they can negotiate um, a, a national consortium can negotiate sensible prices with you know penguin random house or with upper collins in a way that you know knows even even the, the consortia that exists at the moment can do because the the only um, leverage leverage that the the consortium has is how big it is. So I would encourage the, the use of big, large, and possibly national consortium consortia, both for stock purchasing and and also for systems purchasing. This is my last slide. I think the, the what I'm trying to say to you. This is a conference about advocacy. I, I believe that advocacy, advocacy means you will promise to increase the use of your libraries and in return for that promise which will be delivered, your funding body, your local uh, politicians would, are re would be reasonably right to give you increased funding. It's, and and they, they are entitled to ask and to see that that increase in use takes place because otherwise, there is really no mechanism whereby library, libraries are going to be required to find the ways that they can increase the use, which is what they need to do as we go forward out of the pandemic. So thank you very much for listening to me. Um, and thank you again to John. Uh, and that, that's, I'm very, I'm very grateful. And I hope you will obtain a copy of the FECA report for 2022.